Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to look at setting up Prusa Slicer to run with printers not made by Prusa. Stay tuned. This video comes to us direct from one of my viewers who was asking a bunch of questions about Cura. I had to admit, I haven't used Cura from my Maker Select for quite some time. And the viewer was just trying to get their Maker Select back on track. So the easiest way to talk about it, to set it up, and to create a profile in Prusa Slicer for the Maker Select is what we're looking at today. I'm gonna go into my Prusa Slicer setup and show you all my settings and how I get it to work with my Maker Select. I also have some Prusa Slicer settings for my D9, but they are not working real well yet. So I'm really not willing to put those out into the public yet. But for the Maker Select Plus, no problem. First of all, I use the Prusa Slicer for the Maker Select Plus for a couple of different reasons. Number one, when you want to do multicolors and adding pauses or color changes, that kind of thing, Prusa Slicer is just about the easiest out there. And I tend to do that a lot with both my prints here and with the prints that I do at work. Second of all, Prusa Slicer seems to create a better G-code. It seems to work better with both acceleration and jerk settings. It makes my Maker Select run a little bit smoother, a little bit cleaner. It controls stringing. It seems to be better all around for what I'm using it for. Now, does that mean don't use Cura? Not at all. Use whatever you're comfortable with, wherever you have your settings set to go. But I'm going to show you what I've used in Prusa Slicer for the Maker Select Plus itself and how I've gotten it to work just fine. Some code that I've added, some, some settings, all that stuff. So let's head over to the computer and I will show you what is going on. All right, here I am in Prusa Slicer 2.5.0. I'm hoping I get this all down right. I haven't done a lot of this for a long time. The main focus of this particular video is to uh, inform you of my settings for the Maker Select. I haven't actually added a printer for a while, and, and so take this worth a grain of salt, but uh, we're gonna try to add a printer. For adding a printer, I would go up here to Configuration and do a computer Configuration Wizard, which is gonna pop up this screen right here which I'm just going to skip over all of this and go to custom printer and define a custom printer profile. Now with this, you'll put in, you know, your name of your printer, whatever you want to call it. You'll set up whatever kind of firmware you're running and then the bed shape and size and where the home is, um, your nozzles, all that kind of stuff, the filament, and then your basic temperatures, these nozzle and bed temperatures are going to be changed whenever you put in a new filament and you can also update them on the fly, that kind of stuff. So well, you can go through and you can mess with as much of this as you want um, to set up for that custom printer. And then in the end, let me bring this up here. In the end here, you would just click finish and then you would have a custom printer. So now where the printer shows up is over here. So now I have all of these system presets. I don't know why I haven't deleted those yet, but down here on my physical printers is where it's listed the ones that I actually have hooked up to my system through OctoPrint. So I am going to go to the Maker Select one is the one that I have set up and I usually am running PLA on that. eSun is my jam on that printer. So that's what I'm usually running. And then there is my Maker Select. I don't know why I still call that test, but it was back when I was trying to test and make sure that it was working with Prusa Slicer and that kind of business. So all of that should be set up pretty good right there. And then depending on what your filament and your settings are here, then you would go across to the settings in the menus here. Now I am going to uh, just show these, I guess, and you can pause the video wherever you want to see them for longer. So here's uh, what I use for layers and perimeters, um, solid layers five and four. 
Uh, this is mostly what came with the setting. Uh, so here you would set up some fuzzy skin if that's what you wanted to do, that kind of thing. Um, so there you have that. The infill is usually I set this up, you know, per item I'm slicing. So I don't always go with 20, but that's a good placeholder. And then um, I mess with the fill angle every once in a while. I mess with all of these settings pretty much whenever I need to uh, to set up a better or different infill. Um, usually I, this is what I'm using here, except I sometimes just adjust the percentage a little bit. Skirt and brim. So this is what I do with a skirt. I do two loops and I make it uh, three layers high. That makes it easier to just take your fingernail and pick it off of the bed when it's done, if it's three layers high there. That's one thing that I like about Prusa Slicer that I didn't see in Cura, was the ability to make that skirt a little bit higher. Literally, it makes a difference if you're trying to, you know, pick it off when, you're, when your print is done. It makes a big difference. There's some port material uh, right now. Well, let's turn this on so we can see what's in here. And then I almost always run with auto-generated supports unless I need to add support enforcers or support blockers. But that's usually checked. I don't find myself running rafts very often because using hairspray, I really don't need any extra um, stick or leveling on the first layer of the print itself. So there's really no reason to run a, la a raft if you don't have any adhesion problems. Um, so here's all the settings for this. Uh, remember, here's your pattern angle, just in case the um, supports are going the same direction as the first layer of your print above the supports. Because that's one thing that Prusa Slicer will do to you is that they'll go the same direction and then it's almost like you waited for a supports to print, but it's almost like a bridging look on the bottom of your, of your piece because your bottom layer went the same direction. I always try to make sure that this right here is unchecked, okay, because I don't necessarily most, in most cases what I'm printing, I don't necessarily like to let the Prusa or any of my printers just bridge. Uh, at will, so I tell it to totally support, like that tells it to support everything that should be supported. So anyways, here's the settings for that. So go ahead and turn that back off. My speed settings for the Maker Select are right here. Um, that's just what I found works the best. If your printer doesn't like those, uh, you can totally mess with them in here. Lots of settings to mess with. I don't know if the printer can actually do 100 millimeters travel per second, but it seems to work for me right there, not a big deal. So the Maker Select is not super fast, but I've gotten away with these pretty easily. Uh, I don't know that there's anything under multiple extruders that we need to talk about, because um, they don't have multiple extruders. Under Advanced, here's the settings. I think most of these are what came with the printer itself, however, this right here, don't underestimate your elephant foot compensation. This is what makes your la your very beginning layer on the print bed not squish out in a way that you have to cut it off later, you know, with a burr knife or something like that. This is a real handy setting right here. So there's that. Output options, those are pretty much the way Prusa does it. I don't think I've changed anything there. Nothing in notes, nothing in dependencies. Um, my filament settings. So on my Maker Select, I almost always, almost exclusively print PLA. So this is just the color it shows up in the viewer when you're when you're slicing PLA. There's my you know settings. I said back when we set up the printer that you'd have a chance to set up these settings. I mean, same kind of thing right here. <clears throat> Here's your basic for this particular filament, and you can have multiple filaments set up. So it's just this one. This is what mostly I print PLA out of really good luck at 215 and 60. So here's my cooling settings. Now on my Maker Select, I do have a Cobra cooling shroud and a pretty decent blower style fan on the back of that. So my fan settings are probably pretty low compared to if you had a more stock printer that was throwing uh, air not quite as contained as mine. 
Um, I know I have a video on that somewhere, that Cobra cooler. I've been using it ever since I made it and it works great. Um, so low settings right there. I'm not sure I've changed much in here because I mean, we don't, I'm not using a wipe tower. I'm not using any tool change stuff. So that doesn't really matter. Apparently nothing here is set, so that's not a big deal. Okay, um, for the filament, there's no specific G code that I that I've set up custom, but in the printer settings, I do have some custom G code for the Maker Select. So stick around for that. Um, and of course, there's no notes and really no dependencies on this one. It's a good time for me to mention that if you're getting use out of my videos and my posts, uh, please consider throwing me a like and a subscribe down there. Um, That'd be really helpful. The channel's not growing as big and as fast as I wanted it to, but at the same time, I am not able to post super consistently like a lot of the YouTubers out there. Well, I'm actually working three jobs, so um, take that for what it's worth. But if you find my content useful, please consider subscribing. On to the printer settings. This is where it gets a little bit picky, okay? Um, my max print height right here Notice I've got that set for 200, so the Maker Select itself is 210 by 210 by 200. But I've added a few things, like a, I've added like a thicker bed carriage, and I've added, you know, the removable metal print surface on there. So that's actually raised that up a little bit, so it's actually reduced my ability to print up to 210. So I just punch that down to 200 and, and call it good. G-code flavor... As that is what it is. So here's the custom G code, and this is probably what you're going to want to see because with my machine, I don't really like the way that Cura and Maker Select people have the comp have the printer start and end. So I've designed this G code through a lot of research. I mean, I'm not a G code guru, but just a lot of research to put this G code together, find something that works for me. It's going to throw down something almost the same as what a Mark III throws down. Um, Prusa's got it pretty much figured out, I think, there. But it's going to go and find home, and then it's going to come down. But then it's going to actually throw down a prime line, you know, wait for it to come up to temperature. It looks like there's only one line there that's missing. So if you get that down, it works really well for me, makes a nice purge line. And then it's able to jump right to the print with no, like, missing spaces and no like curled up first touch of filament like none of that it works really great and then at the end um, I want it to do all the stuff turn the heater off that kind of thing but it's retracting the filament moving up a little bit and it's going to kick the bed forwards for me which is something that I never got with Cura so it kicks that bed forwards so your piece is right there you're not messing with the print head and you're not trying to yank the bed back and forth so it prints it kicks the print head print bed forward turns the steppers off all that kind of stuff works really well i haven't had any trouble with it and i think those are the only that's the only custom g code i've got in there is this start and end g code um <clears throat> so that's that's pretty useful i think i i don't think i've messed with these machine limits when i set up the custom printer um, they just came up this way, really. I haven't really messed with them. So, if everything goes right, there's nothing, no big deal here anyways, I think. And then, of course, our nozzle diameter. And um, here's where you would want to set up, you know, your retraction or any of your Z-hop or any of that kind of stuff right here. This is what I, like, I hardly ever come in here. These settings work for me for almost everything, and I get very minimal stringing with PLA and everything. But if I needed to, I would come in here and mess with uh, this kind of stuff. Notice for anybody who's running a Bowden setup on any printer that, that this retraction length is set for an all metal direct drive hot end. So it's uh, you don't need that pulling back too far. You get clogs. <clears throat> if it doesn't pull back far enough, then it doesn't stop your stringing. So that will not be valid for printers that are different than what I have set up, I don't think. I mean, it might be a good place to start, but but that's about it there. So we've got no notes, no dependencies really. 
One last thing though, because I have this printer set up as a Octoprint printer that just shoots all of the information across my network to start a print. Uh, that information I believe is in here. Um, so that's my setup for Octoprint. Um, not hard to set up, not hard to test. Get yourself the API key, password, all that stuff from your Octoprint and you should be good to go. <clears throat> this is, however, not a video about Octoprint. That would take a much longer time. So hopefully that is that. Notice I don't have anything fancy here. I just have 210 by 210 on the bed, but all of the actual Prusa slicer options work for this. You can do any of the stuff that Prusa Slicer's got set up and it really works well really handles the printer well. The printer, my Maker Select prints much, much better, much easier, much smoother using Prusa Slicer 2.5.0 than it ever did with anything Cura was putting out. Now, maybe I could have really set up some more time and set up some more, you know, settings and cranked some things around and really rearranged some stuff to make Cura work. Uh, maybe I could have. Um, but I got tired of running multiple slicers for my printers. Prusa Slicer was the one that, that seemed to work the best. And when I finally set it up for my Maker Select, it really made that printer sing. So I haven't actually gone back. I haven't run Cura for a long time. Hopefully that helps people. Um, hopefully that gets you into uh, an easier setup, a better setup, being able to print a little bit cleaner. Thanks for watching. Thanks for visiting my channel. Please subscribe down below, and if you can, give me a thumbs up. Maybe ring that bell. We'll see you out there.